Hello guys and welcome to a new video regarding our tape series. In this video, we're going to look into the key things to watch for on a tape and questions to ask yourself when learning this method. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and keep that notification bell on for future videos. Alright, to get into it, we set up our tape in the last video a certain way. So, we had our blue identify that those are the orders that are going off onto the ask. We have our red identifying orders that go into our bid. We highlighted in a dark shading orders that occurred above the ask and in a dark red shading orders that occurred below the bid. We had our second tape constructed where it only showed us lots above 20 and also the fact that it's reconstructed on orders of 20. So even though we'll have a flash of, say, plenty of ones, if it all occurred on the same price, the same milliseconds of time, it will reconstruct onto this uh, tape on the left. We use the unfiltered one lot tape to get a sense of our pace our speed of flow this speed will show us when there's interest in these prices if we trade higher and the pace slows down that shows to us that not many people are interested in these prices at the moment when pace picks up as we go down there's interest in those prices they are they're curious to see where these trades could go um, we'd like to see on our big tape when it's these large participants putting trades through and it also gives us a chance to watch the big picture view of how things are starting to shift a certain way whether there's more buyers to sellers that are aggressive in that sense And we want to keep this stuff together where if we have big numbers on our depth of sales, we want to see the response to those numbers. And so this is when those questions come in, is when our aggressive buyers are met with these bids, in this instance here, these bids, sorry, these offers, do they get taken out? Do we move higher? Do we move lower? And the same is when a large print comes through, how does that affect whether or not we go higher or lower? So even if we get a large print go on to our offers, but we go lower, something's happening and that's what you need to watch for when we have large size sitting on our bid and offers do we start to just steam ahead right towards it when it appears do we just start to back away from it and then when it comes to actually filling that huge order do we fully fill the order if say we had 100 lots does that get filled or did that order get pulled away? And then while it is getting filled, who's filling it? Is it lots of little orders? There's lots of little orders that are just flying in the tape of people just rushing down that price. Or is it someone huge? Someone just steps in and takes it all out. Do they sweep that bid or offer of size? So you can watch the tape for a while and get those questions through. So we can see that pace has a certain speed to it. It seems not as quick as we go higher, but then it flashes down. So there seems to be more interest going lower. Pace is increasing as we head lower. 
We have a 60 down here. Pace is decent in that move up. Might have just been a few big orders going through. Had a huge lot pass through. 147. Large seller. They're getting paid. So far, these big buyers might have been trapped. Bit of two-way flow here. We want to watch for when this imbalance starts to shift. And this imbalance happens when aggression is not met with results when it is met with the results. And by that, I do just mean the buyers had no results. The sellers did. We'll get more into that sort of thing as it's a foundational aspect of how markets move. Pause it there for a second and speak on that. So what makes a market move more easily is when we have our interested longs, they are not met with much results, and so they are stopped out. When that happens, prices might move a little bit down. As we revisit that, sellers start to get worried and they might have got stopped out. We come back below. We now have no one, we'll say most might have been stopped out. Most of the participants here were considered wrong. And then as we move lower, those shorts start to chase his prices and lungs as well get stopped out. And this is effectively what, effectively what moves the markets is that action of advertising. We bring in interested buyers. They are stopped out. Prices then move higher, stopping out our sellers. As prices come back down, we'll have the sellers interested in chasing the prices lower, trying to get any prices they can until they are met with buyers that are interested again in purchasing this. And that is what gets us these distributions of volume when they're met with both sides interested in prices. So to take advantage of this sort of information, you wanna be cautious, watching our tape, watching the flow, knowing that right now we are interested in lower prices because sellers are getting paid, buyers are getting stopped. If you wanna go for a long in this scenario, what you'd want to see is when sellers start to get stopped out. Sorry, you'll see buyers get stopped out, sellers stopped out come back in and then look to go higher with longs chasing it. You watch, still a lot of selling. The six of that flash through and accumulated together as a 71. large below buying, sorry, large below bids. <laughs> large tape filtered, very red. A lot of selling, but are they getting results for that selling? 
we wait to see a distribution form to show that shorts might be getting trapped. We're watching to see when an imbalance starts to shift in the buyer's favor. Large order sitting on the bid, pushing away from it. Might be able to get a few ticks. Long start coming up onto to get a fill. So we know they got fills. We have about a mixed tape here in this scenario. So we want to get along. We want to see these longs get stopped out. We come back into our distribution and we look to trade towards the long side uh, whilst they chase it up further. Still haven't seen that stop out just yet. Scenario shorts got stopped out. We form a distribution here. We could be looking to see if sellers can further be stopped and forced to cover. Back to watching if longs might liquidate. Another huge order. Don't seem to be steaming into it. Seems to be a bit of a struggle. You could probably get a few ticks off of that. Okay. Wait for our third chance. Not a huge stop out. We see a rush in, place my order, see if we can fill back that vacuum that might have occurred. In this instance, we're thinking that longs might have been stopped here. And they might be chasing it higher. So at this point, we were too late on that trade. And that's the essence of, of watching this kind of reaction where these longs get very aggressive to chase into these prices because they think they're missing out on the possibility of this huge move higher. You can watch to see how they react to big orders on the bid and get a few ticks through like I had in that situation where they weren't showing that much aggression towards it. So it gave you a few chances to come on. I try not to take more than three. You know, third time's a charm when they push it through. And that kind of gets a quick overview of the questions you ask yourself when watching tape. And just to reiterate those, it's just what is our response on the best bid and offer when they're met with these aggressive individuals? Are we moving higher or lower? I, you know, are they showing results? And how are they affected when large size is printing through the tape? Does that further increase our movement? Or is it met with more absorption? And when we see large size sitting on limits, how is the market reacting to that? Are we then moving up quicker towards it? Are we pulling away from it? Is it slow? And we are we building up a position to then shoot it through. And then whilst we're trading into that price, large bid or offer, whatever it may be, is it being filled quickly? Or is it being filled over the course of smaller orders? And if it is going to be filled, where is it getting pulled? Because if it gets pulled, we'll see that in the tape. We'll see that we went through those prices. We didn't have any size trade through into that price or even just we had no flurry of prices 
in our tape that showed that that got filled. And if you wanted to sum that all up, it's just, is aggression met with results? Is it not met with results? And when it's not, with, when it's not being met with results, you want to watch for when the balance starts to tip in the other favor. All right, guys, that was a good overview regarding the main things you watch for on the tape. Catch us in the next video to see how these sort of informations can help you set up trades for yourself. Keep that notification bell on and catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.